my name is Nick Rossi. I am a preserved materials technician. I come to you with a BS in biology from St. John Fisher College. I've been at Ward's Natural Science for just about three and a half years now. That entire time I've worked in the preserved materials lab. Uh, what exactly are we going to be talking about today? We'll be discussing the NSTA and the NGSS standards. We'll talk about specific learning goals so that you can um, look to complete those standards that you're looking to uh, go after. We'll discuss different specimen options, um, a bunch of different bullfrogs you can choose from, um, whether you want injections or um, a specific preservative, we can talk about that as well. I'll briefly discuss uh, dis dissection materials. We'll go over required ones and then ones that are suggested or recommended. We'll also do a little bit of pre-lab planning and go over safety. From that, I'll discuss a research grid that you could have your students fill out before, during, or after their, their dissection. Uh, from there, we'll actually do a dissection. We'll um, compare a male and female bullfrog, and I've also got a plain preserved bullfrog that we can take a look at, and also a double injected bullfrog so that you can do a little comparison to see what you may prefer for your classroom. And then lastly, as I discussed, I'll take any questions that you guys may have for me. Uh, so the NSTA, uh, I hope you've heard of them. It's the National Science uh, Teachers Association. What they are usually looking for in a possibly dissection activity is they want you and your students to develop skills of observation and comparison. This is a great activity for this because you'll be able to observe the appearance, the location, um, and then also kind of talk about the function of different organs, veins, and arteries. And by comparison, you'll be able to look at those different organs, see how they're different from each other in appearance, function, and then kind of location in the body. This is also great because the bullfrogs are very similar to humans, so you can kind of intertwine that as well and compare an amphibian to a human. They also want you to look and develop a greater appreciation uh, for the complexity of life. This will be very easy to do because by opening up something as simple as your students may think a bullfrog is, you'll be able to see exactly how complex they are and how all of these different organs work together to uh, at times perform a common function. Uh, moving on to the NGSS standards, if you've never heard of them before, these are the next generation science standards. Uh, they were developed in April of 2013 and have thus far been adopted by 12 different states. Um, what they are looking for you to do is very similar to the NSTA um, by looking at different organs and seeing how they're intertwined and work together to perform common functions. A great example of this would be to say in your middle school or high school classroom uh, is discuss the digestive system, and you can go down each organ, see how they're intertwined and work together to perform a common goal. Uh, on to the next slide. Uh, specific learning goals, very similar to what I just said. Um, today we'll be doing a very simplified dissection because bullfrogs tend to be an organism that you will do in either middle school or high school. Uh, so from this, we'll go over uh, the digestive system and different organs you hope to see uh, as I mentioned before, it's very simplified, very little cuts are involved, and then we'll open it up and you'll be able to take a look at the internal anatomy of the female, female and male bullfrog, and then we'll um, discuss what they look like, and then you'll get a comparison of our two products that I have here today. So specimen options. We have an array of different um, options available to you, um, whether it be a different size, a different injection, or a different preservative all the way to the right on that graph are item numbers. You can either look those up uh, by punching those into our search option on our website to find an array of different options based on uh, quantity and then whether they're in a pail or a vacuum pouch. Or you can just do a simple search for bullfrog on our website and a bunch of different options will come up and you can uh, easily search between the different preservatives. Uh, to give you a brief explanation of the differences between all of them, the formalin preserved, of course, uses 3% formalin. Um, if you are looking for something that's not preserved in formalin, even though it tends to be the best preservative, we also have a formaldehyde-free option, 
which uses uh, glutaraldehyde in, um, instead of formalin preservatives. Or we have our brand uh, Ward Select, which actually does not use an aldehyde at all. Um, so if you're looking for possibly the most preserved product, you may want to look uh, more formalin based. If you're worried about formaldehyde or aldehydes in general, you may want to look into our Ward Select product. Uh, in addition to that, you can look at different injections. We have the plain preserve for every single size. This is just uh, no injections made. We have single injected. This uses a red latex to inject the artery, so you will see a red latex in the heart, the lungs, and uh, other organs of the body. Double injected, um, very similar to the single and double injected uh, specimens. Here, grab my glasses, apologize. Uh, the double injection also has the red latex, but as well features a blue latex, which is injected into the veins. So you'll see uh, the liver be blue, um, you'll, the gallbladder will get a little bit of a bluish hint to it, makes uh, a few of the different organs a little bit easier to see. We also have a triple injected organism uh, for the larger specimens. This actually has the red latex, blue latex, and a yellow latex, which is injected into the intestinal mesentery to make the intestines a little bit uh, easier to see. So moving on, uh, we also have different specimen options you can look at. Um, in addition to your dissection uh, model. Uh, I wanted to show you a museum mount. This is something that we make in-house here. Uh, this is, if you can't see it very well, it's a bullfrog that has been dissected and injected. Um, this is a great tool to use in addition to your dissection specimen as you can um, use it for either a testing, testing mechanism um, a way to study, or it's a great way to ensure your students know what they're looking for because it gives you an idea of where things are located and how deep. So it uh, is a great way to give your students the idea of where things are so that they don't possibly cut up something that they may be tested on later. Uh, also a great thing about this and how it can be used as a testing mechanism is there is a key card on the back. There are a bunch of numbers that are gelled to different organs, veins, and arteries that we would deem important in this specimen. On the back is a key card saying what each one of those numbers represent. So if you wanted to test your students on these, all you would actually have to do is put up a piece of paper um, covering this key card, and you can actually test your students on the numbers that are located on the museum mount. So if you had to ask me, that's what I would have preferred when I was in middle school, high school, or college doing dissections. Uh, it gives you a heads up at what exactly you're looking for, um, what some of the organs look like, and then where they're located. Uh, so moving on, uh, you can look through this list as um, you will. Uh, we've got a bunch of different um, materials that I will be using today. These are all materials that I would deem required. Um, on the right are item numbers if you wanted to look them up through our website. Uh, moving on to recommended materials, uh, on the bottom are some of our other products that have to deal with bullfrogs. Uh, the anatomy museum mount is one of them, the one I just showed you. We also have skeletons. We also have a bunch of micro anatomy products in our slides location, so you could look those up as well. Um, another one that I get a lot of questions about, which is on top of the slide in the red are formal and neutralizing pads. They tend to be a very um, popular product right now because there tend to be a lot of questions regarding uh, formaldehyde usage. So those are a great product. You actually just put them down right above the tray that you're using and they uh, have been tested to uh, decrease formal and off-gassing for, uh, by up to 40%. So that's a great product if you're worried about uh, your students possibly um, getting burning eyes or um, any kind of issues with uh, formaldehyde. Uh, lastly, I did want to plug our new dissection guides. This is something that I helped um, create with a medical illustrator. We have hard copies of these available and also digital, so you could use these in your classroom and give your students a little heads up and um, a good study guide to use from. Uh, so let's briefly go over pre-lab pre safety and planning. 
Uh, you'll want to check for latex allergies. You'll always want to wear gloves and possibly an apron and goggles at all times when you're doing dissections. Uh, I wanted to make it aware that scalpels are not necessary. I actually won't be using one today. So if you are using or plan on doing uh, dissections with middle school or high school students, you may want to stay away from these. Uh, they do tend to make the dissection a little bit quicker, but they are uh, slightly dangerous and it's very easy to cut out certain organs, veins, or arteries you may be studying later with these as they are extremely unforgiving. Um, and then also I would encourage you to read and sign off on a safety ground, ground rule sheet. Um, and then from there I'll briefly talk about a research grid. So if you hit the next slide, uh, we've come up with a little bit of a table on what you can actually have your students go over before the dissection. If you get them talking about how the bullfrogs are actually very similar to humans, they should be able to come up with a decent list, even if they are in, say, elementary or middle school. As you can talk about the heart, the circulatory system, the lungs, the digestive system, etc., they should be able to come up with a decent list on their own. So I would encourage you to do that with your students before actually delving into the dissection. Uh, lastly, you can have them fill out a, a table or a diagram of the anatomy or physiology before they do the dissection uh, as they do it or after. Um, you could always use this as a tool to see what they already know and then what they've learned from the dissection from this. So you can use a diagram such as this shown on the slide there. Um, so this brings us to the dissection. Leah, if you want to hit the um, little camera so I can show the difference between frogs here. So what I wanted to do initially was actually show the difference between a male frog and a female frog. As you can do this quite easily externally before even doing a dissection. So there are a few ways you can tell. You can look at the thumbs. As you can see here, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is a male. If you look at their thumbs, they tend to be a little bit bigger than that of a female. This can be a little deceiving though, as it's not really a way that 100% will show the differences. Uh, another way is by looking at the color of the throat here. This is a male. It tends to have a more yellowish hue. And I'll show you a female here right next to it. It should be more white. Again, this isn't a great way to distinguish between male and female, but it is a way you should be able to tell. Um, however, if you do buy an um, injected specimen, this can be a little bit different. It will usually have a red hue because it's injected with red latex through the arteries. So this will kind of take away that aspect. But the best way to determine whether you have a male or female frog before actually opening them up is by taking a look at their eardrum right here that I'm pointing to with my thumb. Uh, it's a round structure. This is how they hear. And you will want to look at the size of it. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you'll want to compare it to the size of the eye. If you look here, the eardrum tends to be um, bigger than the eye. This uh, is a good distinguishing factor that it is a male. And then if you take a look at the female here, the eardrum is usually the same size of the eye or smaller. So that is the best way to determine whether you have a male or female bullfrog before actually open, opening them up. Um, so before you do this, I would encourage your students to put on their safety glasses, gloves, and aprons, and grab your dissection tools. All you'll really need for this is a pair of dissecting scissors and also a pair of forceps if you're um, looking to uh, point out special features here. Um, in addition to this, you'll also want some T-pins. This will help um, pull the frog and keep him in place if you're using one of our dissection trays. Um, so just briefly to show you um, how simple this actually is, I'll just do a brief demonstration of some of the cuts you'll have to make, and then I will show you a frog that has already been dissected. So I initially made a cut here. You'll want to make a cut right around where the a bladder or right where the thighs are for the frog. You'll just make a very small snip and then move your scissors up as I am right here. You'll want to make sure it's not a very deep dissection because if you go too far, you'll most likely puncture some of the organs. 
Uh, this will give, give way to some fascia, as you'll see right here, as this will be connected. You just make another small snip and then move your scissors up through that direction as well. And once you do that, you can manually kind of push down on the legs of the frog and that will help uh, open up its anatomy. Uh, from there, you're basically making just two cuts. Uh, you'll make one right underneath where, I guess you would say the clavicles are, if you're doing a human. So as you can see here, you'll just push down just a little bit and then basically make a cut down right past its arm and then as far down as you can because you'll want to open this side up which will open up its internals and then there may be a little bit of fascia left you can cut through that just make sure you're not cutting too deep from this point you should be able to see the liver so just make sure you're not puncturing that and you'll do the same exact thing on the other side That'll open up the top there. And then you will do the same thing right near the thighs or where the bladder would be. And you're going to do the exact same thing. Cut as far down as possible as you can. And you will do the same thing on the other side. So this is basically just making one vertical cut and then two horizontal ones to open up the internals of the frog. From there, you can manu manually use your fingers to kind of open this area up. And then I would encourage you to use uh, T-pins, which is described on the slide where I talked about some of the products you should be using, as this will help keep the frog in place and help you point out different organs. So I'll go through this guy somewhat quickly as I have one that's already dissected out. Uh, this will give you a great idea of basically a majority of the organs, veins, and arteries that you would be testing. Uh, so right off the bat here, Leah, are you able to um, zoom up at all? You got it. Perfect. One second. One second, guys. Just want to make sure you're able to see a so, decent view. That is good. Perfect. Um, so right off the bat, you will see a majority of the internals is actually the liver, this entire mass right here. You can push this to the side, and actually if you open it up, you will see um, the gallbladder, which is right underneath here. If you move it to the side, I'll grab my forceps so I can point right here. Uh, this, of course, stores bile. That's why it's got that greenish hue to it. And then if uh, the liver will use this bile to um, secrete and help aid in digestion. Um, so right off the bat, I'll just briefly go through this. You'll see a bunch of mass that's actually got a sparkling kind of hue to it. These are ovaries. So right off the bat, you can tell um, if you weren't able to do it externally that this is a female because the, the ovaries do tend to take up a majority of the internals here. And I will switch to my other product very quickly. This one, as I said before, was already dissected and pinned out, so I could save a little bit of time here. Um, you'll see right off the bat, we've got the heart up top. The lungs are a little bit tricky to see in a bullfrog. It's not as apparent as, say, a fetal pig or a cat. You actually have to maneuver, and they're usually um, behind the liver slightly. I pinned these out already. They're on each side, the lungs. So if you open up the bullfrog and don't have it pinned out, obviously, you'll have to search for them. They're usually right behind the liver and the heart. Uh, from there, you'll have the liver. If you open up between the first and second lobe, you will have the gallbladder, which I showed you before. Um, from there and moving your way down, you will get to the stomach, uh, this large structure right here. This of course is used for food storage and it is the area where digestion first takes place. Uh, moving through the digestive system, the stomach connects to the duodenum right here. This is the very front part of the small intestine 
The small intestine is where a majority of absorption and digestion takes place. And then backtracking slightly is uh, these spindles that connect to the stomach is actually the pancreas right here, which uh, aids in digestion by secreting um, digestive enzymes to help aid in digestion. Uh, then moving further down, uh, you'll move down the small intestine, which um, will bring you to here. This is the large intestine. Uh, it's very, very small on bullfrogs compared to other um, animals, mammals you may uh, eventually look at in dissection. Uh, very small, but this is where digested food is stored until it's eventually released. Uh, from there, if you move slightly up, this is the spleen. Um, if you can see that, hopefully you can. Um, it's usually a bluish hue. Uh, the spleen is um, for creating, maintaining, and eventually destroying red blood cells. And then next to the spleen, two organs that actually look very similar to it in size and structure, but are a white or yellow hue right here that I'm holding with my forceps. These are actually the testes. So if you wanted to ensure this was a male, this is how you would see. You wouldn't see that giant uh, mass of ovaries and eggs like you did in the female. You would see the two testes down here, um, basically right on either side of the spleen. Uh, from there, we'll talk about the fat bodies. These are these um, kind of wiry spindle-like structures that are usually found um, towards the back of the bullfrog. These are uh, masses of fat that are used for hibernation. Uh, we'll take a look at a double injected female in a second here and you will not see these. This is because um, these fat bodies that are used for energy storage are actually used up very, very quickly in females to produce eggs. So you most likely will not see them in females. Um, if you do, usually you will not see a large amount or they will be uh, very large in quantity. Um, moving along, if you push the testes aside, right here you will have the kidney. It's this uh, actually quite big um, for a bullfrog. You'll see it on the left hand side and then also if you move um, some of these organs away, you'll see it on the right hand side. You can barely see it. If, you, uh, if these weren't pinned down, you'd be able to see it a little bit better, but you'll see it on each side of the body. Uh, kidneys, of course, being used for uh, filtration or equilibrium of uh, body fluid. And then it's a little bit hard to see on a plain specimen. So this is why I brought a double injected specimen as well, because it's a little bit easier to see and I would encourage it for um, students is if you look here that my forceps is pulling up, this is the posterior vena cava a vein that you would uh, easily be able to see if you had a double injected specimen because it would be full of blue latex and then that usually isn't too too hard to see but finding the dorsal aorta which may be something you would want your students to see can be very hard to find if you've got a plain specimen as it's underneath the posterior vena cava but you do have to maneuver the kidney and the vena cava around to find it and even after I found it, you can't really see it that that well. Uh, I've got my forceps under it at the moment. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but I will show you how it's much, much easier to see in a double injected specimen. Um, so I will move on to that and show you a comparison. So this is also a formalin preserved product. The only difference is it is double injected. So it's got a red and blue latex. And I would highly recommend this for um, especially middle school, possibly high school students as well, because it makes it a lot, a lot easier to see um, if you're looking at large organs. Um, unfortunately, I picked a very large female, so she's a little bit messy, but we'll, uh, we'll go through some of her structures as, we, as we've already went through them already. Um, as you can see right off the bat, if you didn't know what um, uh, gender you had, you can see the ovaries over here to the left. I actually had to cut some of these away because they tend to just take up a majority of the specimen and you can't see a lot of the other organs. Um, 
So as you can see, lots of color here. Uh, the heart is very easy to see. It is full of red latex. You can't miss it. Um, as is the liver, it's, uh, it's blue, can't miss it as well. And then if you move the liver off to the side, you can easily find the lung, which can be a little bit hard to find in a plain preserved specimen here. Uh, as you can see, it's full of red latex. It's very easy to distinguish between other, other organs as well. Um, a lot of the other organs, as you can see, the arteries and veins are full of different colored latex, red and blue. So if you move down, we've got the stomach, which is very large on this female. And then moving along, you've got the small intestine here with the mesentery that is injected and a very large, large intestine, which is full of undigested food. Um, in addition to that, which I failed to mention on the last example, I'll put a pin through it so you can see it a little bit better, is the urinary bladder which is where urine is collected and eventually um, stored until it is released. Uh, from there, um, obviously a lot of the other structures do seem to be um, very much the same. Uh, you'll see the um, small intestine over to the right, but also to the left, you'll see the oviducts. Very similar um, looking to the small intestine, but you have a female, so they'll usually be over to the left, hiding behind the ovaries. Um, and then lastly, I did want to show you uh, the difference between the posterior vena cava and the dorsal aorta, because they are quite a bit easier to see in an example just as this. Um, so as you can see, right where this pin is, you'll be able to see the posterior vena cava right where my forceps are. It's extremely blue right next to the kidney. You cannot miss it. You can actually should be able to see it right there. Is that red from the dorsal aorta right where my forceps are that's pulling up on it? That is the dorsal aorta. So if you're hoping to study something as such as this, um, I guess you would say the arteries, um, you would want to look at a at least single injected or possibly double injected specimen because this makes it very, very easy to see. You'd have to do um, quite a bit of hunting to find it otherwise. And um, even a very inexperienced student should be able to find this with a little bit of help thanks to the color change here. Uh, so from that, we can move on. That's all I actually had here for you today. This is a very simplified dissection uh, as I'm assuming this would be for either um, upper elementary, middle school, or possibly early high school. Um, so I will open it up to questions. If anyone has a question, you can feel free to hit star six to open yourself back up to me, and I will do my best to answer any questions you may have for me. Or if you needed um, any clarification on possible organs or systems, or to take a look at the different products that I have here for you today. I have a question that just came in, and I think you sort of just answered it, but um, um, somebody here says they are a first year high school bio teacher offering um, dissection this year, and they wanted your recommendation um, on your favorite item. My favorite item? Best uh, item, <laughs> your favorite item, best item, excuse me. Okay, uh, I would put the preservative up to you. Uh, in my opinion, the Formalin Preserve products are tend to be the best preserved products. So uh, I would take that into account. However, I would recommend a double injected specimen as it makes um, a lot of the organs a lot more easier to see. Um, and then I've also heard some um, recommendations that students don't like to see something that looks real or possibly alive to them. And a plain specimen does tend to look quite real. Uh, double injected, obviously it's very bright and colorful and it's something that most likely would not weird your students out. Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to ask if you do have any questions for me or um, our tech support team, uh, feel free to reach out to sciencehelp at wardside.com. And then if you needed a presentation, feel free to email me at nicholas.rossi at vwr.com. Uh, so with that being said, are there any other questions? Uh, yes, just one moment. I have another one coming in as well. Okay. Um, can you tell us the specific difference between the preservatives? And I think I can go back to your um, 
There we go. So I know you were going over that earlier. Can you um, get a little more in Elaborate on that? Yeah. Sure. Uh, the formalin preserved, um, very straightforward. It is preserved with a 3% formaldehyde. Uh, like I said before, probably the best preservative of the three. So if you're looking for something that's very, I would say, stiff and um, realistic, you would want to go formalin. Uh, the formalin free, a little bit different, does not use formaldehyde or any type of formaldehyde. It uses a glutaraldehyde based solution. Um, so while it is formalin free, it does use an aldehyde. Uh, they are also very, very good products. And then lastly, the Ward Select is also formalin free, but it's also glutaraldehyde free as well. We use no aldehydes um, at all for, use, for that product. So if you were looking for something that's absolutely aldehyde free, you would want to go Ward Select. It's got somewhat of a sweet smell to it. So if you're also worried about um, burning eyes or just formalin off-gassing in general, I would push you towards the Ward Select product as it's a great preservative as well. Okay, the next question that came in is, um, how long do these um, like last in the classroom if you didn't open up the, the pail behind you there? Okay, uh, if you didn't open up the pail or if you got a vacuum pouch of this, we have a guarantee of 12 months. If you did open up the PAL, it should still last for 12 months if you keep it in the fluid. Um, if you open up these products and you hope to use them more than once, say you're doing a dissection and you work on it for a day, but then you place it back in the PAL, it should stay um, fairly preserved for about a month or so. Um, and that works as well as if you're doing a dissection and then you just put it back into a bag. It should last for about a week if you're doing that. So. If you're doing a prolonged dissection, I would encourage you to go the pail route as you can just place it back into our holding solution when you're done. If you don't go that route, you can always put it back into the vacuum pouch and I would just encourage you to, um, as best you can, put a rubber band around it to um, decrease any um, oxygen infiltration. Thank you everyone for joining, appreciate it.